is the Cam Baker Show. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you rookies may be out there. Welcome back. We are live. It is the 28th of October and you are tuned in to the Kev Baker Show right here on the number one network, www.truthfrequencyradio.com. I'm almost trying to rush through this introduction tonight because, guys, it's Halloween week. We've had a bit of a slow build up to this. But this show tonight is going to blow your socks off, let me assure you. This returning guest, she wooed you all first time round, and I am sure she is going to do it all over again tonight. But before we get to this wonderful lady, and Johnny Whistles, a very Scottish feel to tonight's show, I want to welcome you on, man. And we better remind ourselves that we have to slow down what we're saying tonight, because there's a danger that us Scottish people... We might just think we're in the pub and get carried away and go all fast, John. Yeah, I know. I was actually thinking about that, Kev. Three Scots people speaking together in my native tongue. It could get really, really fast, but and we it, will try and hold it down a bit. <laughs> exactly. And it's not just that, because since the last time our guest tonight was on, you and this guest, you've made quite a close friendship. We've spoke off air, all of us quite a lot. So hopefully tonight, the chemistry that was there last time will be added to tonight, Whistles. But before I let you bring tonight's guest on, let me go into the chat room and let me show my appreciation for all you mad Wookiees out there. How are you all doing? Wow, 30 people in the chat so far. Johnny Whistles, every time I look in there, I just have to pinch myself. It's so hard to believe we are right here on TFR the number one. But anyway, let's get in. Let's give these Wookiees a shout out. And I see Freeman 8. I see the one and only, my brother and a fellow host on the network, Joe Joseph. He's in there. We've got the lucky one, one of two, Adam, Angie, Bill, the Photoshop master. I, I do have to say though, Bill, that fractal, Kev Baker, that's now getting very, very Halloweenish. It's scaring people. We've got Brendan, we've got Charlie, we've got Chris, Claire. We've got CP Stoves, we've got Devlin, do you want to know, Edward, Helen, Huggy Bear, and then we've got Jeffrey, Johnny, oh, Johnny Whistles, Kev Baker, well, it'll be us two then, Johnny. We have got the Time Traveller, John Teeter, we've got Lucky Man, Mark, Scott, Nancy, Pam, Peter, it just goes on and on. We've got a couple of Peters in tonight, we've got Sam, we've got the Time Lord, Timothy, and a very, very special Shout out to the one and only Bill, whose birthday it is today. So we had Sharon last night, who had a birthday. We have got Bill today. Many happy Wookiee returns to you tonight, Bill. And I hope you enjoy tonight's show, because I am certainly looking forward to this. We're going to be going into Visions of Baphomet, ex-Satanists, what they've got to say about this whole topic. We're going to be looking at the types of Satanism that exists then we're going to be taking a look at how these occultists and these Satanists break down their year. What's their calendar? And why is this period of time so relevant to them? So without any further ado, Johnny Whistles, bring on tonight's guest. Don't keep them waiting any longer, man. Yeah, Kev, actually it gives me great pleasure to introduce once again back on TFR and the KBS show, the fantastic Mrs. Laura Maxwell. We're going to have a lot of, lot of loo. Oh, sorry, a lot of, lot of woo from Laura Lou. You butchered it. I did. <laughs> Laura, welcome back to the show. Well, thanks so much for having me. It's uh, really good to, to talk. Definitely. Um, Johnny had um, made dinner the other night for my husband and I, and it was a uh, delicious dinner. And we even drank Iron Brew and wore tartan, and that is the truth. You did, because I seen the photographic <laughs> evidence for that. <laughs> there was no photoshoppery going on, but I did see you looking almost as if you had drank all of Johnny Whistle's whiskey. Are you feeling better now? <laughs> I'm only there, joking, Laura. Yeah, there but was it, no whiskey, folks. Yeah, I was uh, playing with a cat and ended up on the, well, four cats and ended up on the, on the floor you're a bit of a cat lady as well, aren't you? Oh, definitely, yeah. 
Right, I think there's something going on on TFR here. There really is because Joe, he, him and his wife Ange, they've got their own cat sanctuary that they're yeah. running. We've got whistles. There's definitely a common theme going on here. Now, Laura, I got a lot of mails the last time you came on the show. And before we start tonight, for any new listeners out there, could you tell them who you are and where they can find your work? Just quickly before we launch into tonight's occult madness. Yeah, uh, Laura Maxwell, I've got my own radio show, uh, my stories and some books, I'm an ex-spiritualist, and my blog is aspiritualquest.tk. And that's aspiritualquest.tk. Now, Laura comes from the position that she was a spiritualist, weren't you, Laura? Yeah, and a new ager. And a new ager, and this really is what we're going to be getting into tonight. You're going to be exposing some of this. But before we even go there, you were sharing with myself and Johnny before the show the fact that you had a vision of something, and it's something we talk about very often on here, and that is, of course, the Baphomet, the hermaphroditic goat that these occultists all seem to worship. Now, I think it would be perfect, Laura, if you could share that vision with us and the audience to set up tonight's show. Yeah, well, basically, um, I left spiritualism 20 years ago, and I've been a follower of Jesus now for 20 years. I don't get a lot of visions, however, I get a few, and it was the day after, let me get this right, September the 24th. Um, oh, the day after the woo day. Yeah, uh, it was, and... Um, I just felt it was really, you know, really significant. Not only is 2015 the year of Lucifer's light, um, but, yeah, and also just the fact that, you know, that the Pope was at Congress and, and all this talk now about New World religion coming together, um, New World order, I just really felt. In, in the vision, Baphomet, his horns were growing even larger and they were in the act of growing, and I just felt that was the, you know, the Holy Spirit showing me that, yeah, you know, we're, we're in the latter days, whether whether folks say that's a tribulation, the first stage or the final stage of the tribulation, that's open to personal opinion, but, you know, I just felt it was significant, and also because I heard from people around the world there's been more demonic activity and more demonic sightings, um, you well, know, Laura, in New York alone, yeah. we've had three young mothers actually killing their children. They've thrown them out of blocks of flats, out of high-rise windows, and they've all claimed that there was some kind of possession involved. They were told by God that this was evil. There's something definitely on the rise, and even for people out there who may not be religious, you may have your own beliefs, you don't have to look far to see the fact that the power of the New World Order and in this case symbolised by the Baphomet in Laura's vision, its power certainly is growing. And Laura, when you've got somebody like the Pope going over to the United Nations, and who only knows the deals that were done behind closed doors, and then we hear somebody like Leo Zagami the other night, a Vatican insider, sharing with us that they're carrying out the kind of rituals in the Vatican that tonight you're going to be kind of telling us about, because we're dealing with Satanism tonight, aren't we? Basically, yeah, the different the different types of, of Satanism and, and the fact that, yeah, they, they are active all year, but particularly October and especially on Halloween itself. And, you know, I think the best place to start before we actually get some of the testimony from these ex-Satanists, which you've worked with, and some of these shows I've actually listened to, Laura, not all of them, but the ones I have managed to catch, absolutely fascinating stuff. But what types of Satanism is there? Um, okay, I'll go into that first then. Yeah, because then yeah. if we get kind of an idea for the kind of layers or the different faces of Satanism, and then we can sure. hear what they had to say about their take on it. Sure. Basically, there is so many types, it's unbelievable. <laughs> and um, they, they do vary. And um, I'd like to start by emphasising not all of them are into uh, criminal acts or human or animal sacrifices. So it would be very unfair to suggest that because we can't 
you know, tar them all with the with the same brush. Um, so it doesn't, are they all bad though, Laura? Is there any good Satanists out there? Is, is, are they all bad, the, the, the different kinds that they are? Yeah, well, let me give an example. Um, are they all bad? I, I, it depends. It sounds crazy, but it depends on your definition of good and bad. For example, there are Satanists who um, do not believe Satan is a real entity. They do not. Um, commit any crimes or anything like that. Um, they're not into evil or casting evil spells or anything. But their lifestyle, they see Satan um, more as a symbol, more um, because they, 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 they want to live a life that is completely selfish, hedonistic, um, not altruistic at all. Um, so, I mean, I, I met one like that a couple of years ago, and, and you know what, she was a lovely girl, she was about 16, um, I met her, my friend and I met her, started talking to her, um, and basically you could tell she wasn't a kind of evil person, you know, she wasn't into killing cats or anything like that, but, it's, but it is like to indulge in, in all of the um, sinful indulgences, you could say. And Laura, how many of these Satan worshippers, albeit good kind of Satanism, light Satanism. Many of these people are deceived, do you think, by, well, whoever's running these churches or these covens or whatever you want to call them. Many of these people have actually been deceived into what they think they're worshipping, but really it's something entirely different. Yeah, totally. Well, you know, I would say that they are all deceived, all the different types, and certainly um, ones like that are deceived because often at the very top there will be a more um, traditional, hardcore Satanist, if you like. Um, and I know that from people who have told me also, not just within the different branches of Satanism itself, but the, the kind of top, really evil Satanists, those guys do infiltrate um, other religions, you know, as you know, Freemasonry, Christianity, Catholicism, the truth movement, um, you know, they, because remember they all feel Satan is a real God and they want to combine everything under his banner. Um, going back to Madame Blavatsky in the New Age, just creating a, you know, a one world religion where Lucifer or Satan is the head. And so, so yeah. would you agree with me then that basically that these politicians, the very, very elitist ones out there, they basically do worship Satan as their God, don't they? Well, I mean, some of them have actually admitted it, so it's not just um, us, you know, spreading propaganda and conspiracy theories. If, if people come out and admit such things, you know, why <laughs> why would they admit it if it's not true? And here's the thing, because, Johnny, we're going to see an election coming up in 2016. Sorry, a C-election coming up in the US. Yeah. And the mere act of one of these clowns, whoever gets voted in, putting their hand on a Bible whether they do it right at the time or not, or they have to go away and do it again in a secret room like Obama, just saying. But that seems to be enough to appease the masses. They seem to think that these people walk in the light, or whatever the good side is. But in reality, John, after speaking to Leo the other night, and knowing the things that we know from all the other guests, and the testimony of Laura and everything else, every day we come here, man, it becomes more clear that these people are blatant Satan worshippers. Yeah, exactly. Kev, you only have to look at Bohemian Grove, but incredibly, some people think it's just a staged event. Do you know what I mean? To, I don't know where they get that from, but look at the things that they do on there. It's like, uh, it's to, what is it, to kill care? Yeah, it's the cremation of care. It's basically yeah. where they can wrap up all the dirt and the crimes and the crap that they've committed over the year. And then burn it in an offering to a mad giant owl. Just saying. But Laura, that is the world we live in, and these people are running it. And like I said during the build-up there, you spoke to a few ex-Satanists. So what do these people have to say once they've left? Yeah, well, well basically they, they've told me... I've, I've spoke to people who are still Satanists. Um, they've, they've, spe you know, they've spoke to me online on YouTube. For example, do you receive a lot of kind of um, 
adversity from them because you're the opposing team, so to speak? Well, yes and no, because, well, I'll give you a quick example. One guy contacted me because he wanted to kill me because he, you know, he and his coven like to particularly kill Christians. So he contacted me and said he would send a, a horde of demons to come and attack me. Um, but I kind of knew this would happen because in my kind of ministry it's going to happen sooner or later. So I knew in advance that type of thing could happen. So I was already prepared, if you like. Um, and I just said something like, well, you know, I'll pray Jesus speaks to you, you know, that, that you can come out of this, he can rescue you out of this. Well, he started going berserk and he was saying, stop it. And he was swearing. He was saying, stop saying the name of Jesus Christ. Um, and I was saying, his blood can cleanse you, forgive you, set you free from this. And he was shouting, stop saying the blood of Jesus. And he was, um, the demons were all screaming and jumping about his room, apparently, and acting crazy. Um, and the guy blanked out because the demons didn't want him to deceive Jesus. He got in touch with me a few more times and he wanted to know more about Jesus, but he kept going back into, um, you know, being taken away by the demons. So then these demons, you know, Laura, they're very, very akin to almost parasites because once they latch on to somebody, it's quite hard for that person to shake them off, no matter even how hard they might try. And the longer that demon or whatever entity it is or whatever frequency or vibration, who knows how you want to explain it, but the longer that spends with a person, the more enrooted it becomes and the harder it becomes to shake off. It can be, but um, I would say, you know, Jesus can set anyone free. But the guy did admit to me that he didn't really want to be free, that he enjoyed it, he enjoyed the, the buzz that he got out of it all. So if he had been willing to be free, then he could have been. Wow, Johnny. I mean, that there's somebody there that was telling Laura that they would actually prefer to be in that lower vibration. And to people like us and a lot of the audience listening, that's going to sound really, really alien. But you have to put yourself in other people's shoes. And who knows what this person or this character's background was. Now, has he made the right decision to go into this line of religion or faith or whatever you want to call it? Who knows? But all of these people have a story as well, Johnny. Maybe we shouldn't be too quick to cast judgment on anyone that does fall into that path. No, because I think it's uh, it must be a, a really hard thing to get out of, especially when... Most of the time, Kev, it's, it has to be done with an exorcism and all that. I was wanting to ask, Laura, when, when you're like so casting away demons or whatever, when you say, in the name of Jesus, does it, does it always work or are there times where that, that just won't work? It always works. Um, it might not work straight away because... Um, for example, you you sit down with the person and the person, um, you know, repents for what they've been involved in. And one by one, demons can come out. Some are a bit stronger, so that's why, um, as the Bible says, um, some demons come out only with prayer and fasting. So um, the minister would fast and the person as well if they felt like it. Um, but... Yeah, it, depending how deeply they're being involved, it's, it, it is a little bit more harder, but it does does definitely work. And um, something I heard last night, Laura, sorry to interrupt you, but this really uh, ties in, and it was something that Clyde Lewis said from Monday night, I believe. He's been covering all this kind of information all week as well, with it being Halloween. Now, I had always been led to believe that the one and only name that would cast out these demons, these entities, was that of Jesus Christ. However, he had somebody on the show, a paranormal investigator and an author called Paul Enno. Now, he said that, yes, Jesus Christ really does work. However, there are other names that work as well. And he said it was on one occasion he was at an exorcism where it was actually Isis, by actually calling out to Isis or calling out the name of Isis, which had the same effect. Now, I'm not sure if that's maybe something to do with that person's particular faith or not, or whether it was maybe a jinn as opposed to one of these 
more Christian type demons that we hear about in the West here. But I found that really interesting because I'd always, always been led to believe that Jesus Christ was like the kind of barrier to put up to cast them out. Yeah, I know what you're saying, and, and I heard that as well when I was a spiritualist uh, and a New Ager. Sometimes they would perform um, what they, may, they wouldn't call an exorcism, but um, and there's different cultures, um, as you say, and religions around the world that perform exorcisms in the name of whoever. But what I also find interesting is that when I came out of spiritualism and became a Christian, I met many others like that who were ex-spiritualists, ex, um, because Muslims cast out, I think they call it genies. Um, it's the jinn, D-J-I-N-N. Yeah. And I was going to ask you, do you think the jinn are actually the same as the demons? But because they're from the Islamic faith and Christianity on this side of the world, there's two different names for the same thing, possibly, Laura? Well, what I think... I Going by what, what I've heard from others and, and from experience, as I was saying, people that have come out of different religions and cultures who did exorcisms in those faiths and then become a Christian, what we all discovered was there is such a thing as, well, this is our take on it anyway, such a thing as false exorcism. And I even needed exorcism for having performed false exorcisms, if that makes you sense. You had to have an exorcism exercised? Uh, yes. Well, this could get quickly confusing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because um, because as I believe Jesus Christ is, is the God, uh, you know, and that the other gods are, are false, they, therefore, before when myself and others were performing exorcisms with a false God, it was just another demon. So we were casting out demons with demons if that makes sense. Yes, it does make, no, that makes sense, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's kind of how I would answer that. And I've Plus, also found it yeah. quite interesting tonight, Laura, with us being on the west coast of Scotland, obviously, quite strong Catholic ties to this area. Now, I was listening to a pastor, and he was from actually Ireland, I believe. I don't have his name to hand. And he was explaining how even a baptism, at the very, at one part of the Catholic baptism, and Johnny, you'll find this quite interesting, but the early stage of that is actually a part exorcism because they cast out the devil before they anoint the person with the oil. And I found that quite interesting, Laura, that here they are with babies born pure into the world, yet they're casting demons out before they claim them in the name of God. It's not something, um, you know, I do. Or, or I knew that you, this would, you'd have something to say about this. Come on, come on, go for it. <laughs> friends of mine do um but i can never i can never see where they're coming at because um and it's not a biblical practice either to cast demons at babies but i see where they're coming from the catholic faith in my opinion is not biblical they do so much things that are just not biblical but i guess they are seeing that in this in the sense of since adam and eve fell and every person is now born you know, descended from, from there and the, the world is now in sin, that yes, every person is born um, with hereditary sin. Um, it's often like when a person who's an adult, for example, um, needs deliverance, they might come to me and say um, things are happening with them and they know they need deliverance. So myself or someone else can discern, well, they've got a demon of Kabbalah there, they've got a demon of Satanism there, they've got a demon of this, that or the other there. Even though that person didn't practice it, but the person will research and find out, well, yeah, actually, my great-grand practiced that. Wow, so and I mean, people out like there might be thinking, this uh -huh. demon, that demon, that sounds a bit bizarre. But if you go back historically, folks, I mean, there's grimoires wrote about these entities that Laura is talking about. This isn't airy, fairy, pie-in-the-sky stuff. This is very, very real. Now, until you've experienced something like this, it may seem a bit out there. But after listening to a lot of the testimony of people who have genuinely experienced something, now it's something I can't explain, be it demonic or otherwise, I don't know. However, they have experienced something physical. So even if we haven't experienced this, and it might seem quite alien to us, unfortunately, this is very, very real. And Laura, it quite worries me when you were telling me about fake baptisms there. 
And then you add that, Johnny, to what Leo was telling us about some of the satanic rituals that occur inside the Vatican. And I wonder if maybe, just maybe, we're seeing these fake baptisms being carried out throughout the world in the name of Catholicism. And that's not to offend anyone. It's you're all being deceived, possibly. I would say so, especially the Catholic faith. That whole thing is a jumped-up cult. That is what it is. It, it, it is the very heart of it. It's a jumped-up cult that want money from the poorest people in the world where they could probably end um, the world hunger kid with all the money that they have. All he would need to do is sell one of his golden toilets and wipe out world kids. And we are back and we are live this 28th of October. I am your host, Kev Baker, and this is obviously the Kev Baker Show. Welcome back, everyone. You're tuned in live to www.truthfrequencyradio.com. And Anne is standing behind me, pulling the mickey out of me here, because Johnny Whistles, seemingly, I swing my arms about when I'm doing my introduction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kev, I've but, seen you on the, the camera doing it, mate, and y- yeah, you do. Maybe I should uh, just say, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> no, but we are having an absolutely brilliant show tonight. Now, coming up right after this show, it's going to be my good friend, my brother, from another mother for sure. I think myself and Joe have been separated over many lifetimes. Maybe in one of them we were even married, Whistles, but he's going to be live after tonight's show. He's going to kick me in stones for that one, but I'll survive. And we have got Laura Maxwell joining us all the way from Glasgow tonight. A very Scottish affair here on the Kev Baker Show. And you can find Laura's work and her books over at aspiritualquest.tk. Are you impressed with that, Laura? I remember that off the top of my head. And she's muted up. (laughs) I'm not sure I've even remembered it because it might be your (laughs) spiritualquest.tk. Oh, so we both got it wrong. (laughs) right anyway laura we were talking about satanists before the break we were talking about how some of them may even have been deceived and we were also getting to the different types of these satanists now what are the main types of satanists out there yeah well there's actually quite a few types and there's multiple subcategories of them as well. There's the theistic, Satanist, the traditional, generational, pantheistic, the Church of Satan, or Levian Satanists. So there's quite quite a variety. Um, And again, they don't all do what we would say are, you know, evil crimes. Some of them do, some of them don't. Some of them um, progress from one type to another. Some of them will... um, lie of their activities so you can't always be sure they are or they are not doing certain things some of them blend a bit of each um, into their own practice so you've got a bit of syncretism going there too Um, but yeah you know I do think it's important to say that we we can't judge because you know some people are born into it and um, I met a woman once who she came to my church um, deliberately to try and curse the church but she was born into it her family had been satanist for 500 years um so she was brought up and as a child even forced to to do unspeakable things um but she came to our church and she actually said she saw light everywhere and the the power of jesus was stronger than the power of satan so she actually became a christian and you Um, do hear that a lot laura you really really do And even for people out there, because you know how I like to include everyone, even if people aren't Christian or don't follow Jesus and faith, if you just think of that as love, love always triumphs over hate. It's so true. And you see that all the time, Laura. Well, yeah, love does triumph over over hate and um, light does overcome darkness, absolutely. Um, but yeah, and also some people are abducted and forced into into Satanism. Um, 
as children or as adults. So it's not always a choice to to go into it. Some are tricked into it um, because they've went to a party hosted by a, a coven, and the party there's been you know drink and drugs. And before they know it, the person has done the ritual. Once you've done the ritual, that's you in the coven. And it's really pretty hard to get back out again because the demons have attached to the person then. And it's just, it's not so easy um, to escape. But but yeah, I've, no, I've got friends who have shared their different experiences with me. And one of the, the common things that um, many of them agree with is that Lucifer truly is Satan. Um, not Sorry, not all of the Satanists believe Satan's an entity, but of those who do believe he is an entity, they agree with Lucifer um, that, that Lucifer is light. They think he is light. Um, many of them um, like the teachings of Madame Blavatsky, Barbara Mac Max Hubbard, Theosophy, but they also look down on New Agers and pagans and others because they feel New Agers, Luciferians, are kind of stupid that they think Lucifer is still an angel of light because these guys who are hardcore Satanists, they know he truly is Satan and that he truly is evil because obviously he appears to them um, sometimes. Quite and interesting really, how yeah. you said earlier on as well, this is the year of light, the year of Lucifer, and that of course we can easily prove whistles. How many times have we told the audience about CERN and the page that they've got dedicated to the fact that they're celebrating this year of light, the year of Lucifer, Laura? Well, yeah, and it's, it's the same as there's others, um, not just CERN, but others, as you know, the UN, UNESCO, and of course the UN does have a theosophy department in it. The UN um, has meditation rooms, prayer rooms, and David Spangler, who's a top medium, a Luciferian medium, he, he worked for the UN for a while. So yeah, you know, there's there are Luciferians in these, in these top places, which makes sense. The Bible says in the last days um, the world will be, um, you know, eventually run by the Antichrist. And so naturally, if that's going to happen, he has to work through politics. And Laura, can I ask you, do you think the Antichrist is a dude or a woman, like as in a person? Or do you think it's the entire system, the New World Order system, like some people believe? I think that the Antichrist is a real uh, person, a real entity, as is, you know, Satan and the false, false prophet. They're, they're real then I have to ask you, is he but, here yet, do you think? The, the, I don't know. But the Antichrist, it's an Antichrist system, yeah, because I would say all of the, the facets that all come together have got demons at the head of, of each of them, uh, working the strings, as it were. The people themselves are, are, are just puppets. Um, it's Satan that's pulling all the strings. Is he here yet? I don't know. But I would imagine he probably is, because looking at prophecy... Um, so much of the Bible has prophecies have happened. There's only a few more to go. We've got the rebuilding of the temple um, that the Jews are looking to do soon. We've got the red heifers being bred for the sacrifice. Um, you've got the you know all religions coming together, looking more feasible. So yeah, I would really say there's not a lot more yet to occur. So I think he may well be here. Um, yeah. I think he's yes, here. here actually. He's, yes, here. He stays in the White House. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably not far from the truth there, Johnny. And a lot of people do claim that Barack Obama could well be the Antichrist. Some people say it's Prince William. Who only knows? But I tell you something, the conditions have never been better for the arrival of the King of Evil because the world right now, Laura, it's all upside down. Absolutely, and there's more there's more occult in the world today than there ever was, and I think the internet has assisted in, in spreading it widely as well. Um, so yeah, there's definitely, and people are more brazen about, for example, if they are a Satanist, they're more brazen about it, um, and the, you know they don't hide it like they used to do. And um, there was something I, I saw recently in the news about a new church. There's new new types of Satanism forming all the time and a very a new one's just 
um, about to open its doors on uh, the day before Halloween. And of course, we've got statues it. in Detroit of Baphomet yeah. sitting there with children around them. I mean, there's something seriously wrong on the world right um, now. Yeah, well, it's the, it's the Antichrist. Since 2012, there was meant to be this shift. And I remember um, a lot of New Agers saying this wonderful shift is about to occur because their spirit guides and their alien friends told them so. Um, so they thought this wonderful shift would happen, but, but it didn't. Many of them left the, the movement because of that. But what I saw happening instead of this light coming was a rise in the Antichrist um, spirit and spirits throughout the world and the occult. So I think it's the same here with uh, this year, 2015. I've heard so many people say there's been a rise in the need for exorcisms. There's been a rise in all sorts of, of uh, demonic activities. And if I can just mention that, that of the different types of, of Satanism, I think probably one of the worst is the neo-Nazis. Um, now, there is an invocation to Satan as well, and I won't read it out, but you know it, it calls him the Lord of Darkness, the, the King of Hell, ruler of this earth, bearer of the true light. And there are some Satanists who genuinely feel um, they've got a better chance going along with Satan because Satan's got quite a good chance of winning this supernatural war for the world and humanity. And therefore, they've chose to, to go with him rather than with, with Jesus or, or anyone else. And a lot, I find this interesting, a lot of Satanists are actually highly intelligent people, um, almost at genius level. And they've actually studied many other spiritualities and found them wanting. And they've narrowed it down to either Christianity or Satanism. And they've chose Satan. Um, I found that quite interesting. You see, this doesn't surprise me, because if there is a vessel out there, then I would imagine that he wants to recruit the best and the brightest for his army when he turns up here, to put it in that kind of terms. But it just shocks me that it is so rampant across the planet right now, Laura. I really am a believer that we should all have our own faith and our own beliefs, but they should be personal, because we only have to look around the world to see how much death and war is caused between one book and and another. And you know, this in itself, the whole war system that we live by down here, again, could be evidence of the Antichrist being here. It's already here, Laura. Oh yeah, definitely. And in my, in my opinion, religion um, has all been designed by Satan in the very fir first place, right back from day one. I don't believe it's uh, Jesus' intention for all these wars and atrocities and everything to happen in the name of different religions. I believe that, that Satan, um, you know, um, got all these religions going just, just to cause such a, well, also just to cause such confusion amongst people and, and, and there's those who are spiritually seeking, um, rather than coming to Jesus, he tempts them to go these other ways. And you um, were saying earlier on, Laura, how people are, they can't be blamed because they're born into this almost and, you know, I was kind of fit that bill because I was baptised in a church of Scotland way before I could even talk. So I had no kind of choice in that, really. And then even before I knew anything, like I know just, just now about the royal family and stuff like that and religion and organised religion, the moment I found out that the Bible had been wrote by a King James or the version that I was reading at that time, that really troubled me. And that's really what turned me away from it. However, that's not to say that I don't believe that there isn't something out there. I think we only have to look at the majesty and the absolute incredible detail throughout the universe to realise that that couldn't all have happened by random. Something definitely created this universe that we find ourselves in. But, you know, in this day and age, Laura, I think people should be more like yourself, and especially like Joe, people like that who have their faith, but they don't have that as their one thing. It's not their person. It's something they practice like yourself, but it's not your character, if you if, if that makes sense. Uh, you've kind of lost me. It's not, the only, it's not the only thing you've got, unlike some people who turn people like me away from it because the only thing they have is the Bible. Uh, yeah, I see what you mean, like, but... We've got other interests as well, and, and we share things in, in common with other people. We don't um, shun someone because they're not born again. 
um, you know, because I say, you know, if, if you were in, a, in an accident situation and um, you were nearly about to drown or something like that, you know, you'll, whoever's going to save you, you, you'll let them help you. Um, you're not going to say, well, I don't want you to touch me because you're not of the same faith as me. Um, I, I think that's uh, just take things too far. But how how confusing, I mean, can re- religion possibly get when I'm sure that the, the first the Hebrew Bible was actually translated to the Geneva Bible, and that was used from, I think it was 1560 to 1616, and then it was the King James Bible. Do you know what I mean? There's three different versions right away. Exactly. So you've got three different kinds right away. And that's why I think the relationship with the Creator, God, whatever you want to call it, it should surely just be a personal one, and not one where you have to go to a set church and follow all these set rules. Because as you've been telling us, Laura... There's a whole heap of deception goes on here. And I imagine there's a whole people who think they're even walking in the light. But really, they're not. I agree with that. It is, it is more about a personal relationship with God, um, definitely. And that, that's what I often say to folks who are actually thinking of becoming a Christian, but they don't want to because they see so much of Christianity as corrupt. Um, I was in that same boat when I was coming to Jesus. I actually didn't want to become a Christian, and yet I knew in my heart he was the answer that, that I personally was was looking for. Yeah, was, this time of year, Laura, this is one of the busiest and most special times of year for these Satanists, these dark occultists. But they practice different rituals and celebrate different holidays throughout the year. So give us a little taste about what a year in the life of a Satanist is like. Yeah, well, basically that there's uh, all year long, every month, they, they are busy. Um, and yes, it, it's true that, you know, they do follow the, whether it's an equinox or a solstice, the moon's important, the full moon. Basically, they do follow the, the natural uh, cycles and they borrow from paganism as well uh, and druidism many of them and basically but uh, you know one of the things I do agree with them is that yeah they're right Catholicism and Christianity did steal Christmas, Easter, Halloween etc you know the original the original pagan festivals and try to Christianize them that um, I agree with that um, and they do also feel that you know Jesus some of them believe he is Jesus but some of them think He's just an incarnation of previous saviour type gods um, because they came before him and Jesus came quite late on in history, as it were. But, you know, I would argue it's actually the other way around. Jesus was there before Cosmos was even created and therefore those other uh, saviour type gods actually copied him on being born December the 25th and being born of a virgin and all of that. So I just thought I'd throw that in there. But yeah, they follow... Um, the calendar that they follow basically all through the year there's um, abductions ceremonial preparation of victims um, they have different types of uh, sacrifices and rituals, it, there could be a blood ritual, sexual ritual um, they do take children they take people, they take animals some of the, the key dates throughout the year are also the key dates for not just um, Satanists, but the Illuminati too. They coincide the exact same dates. For example, February the 1st and the 2nd is the mass initiation um, for Satanists, but it's also the date that Illuminati sacrifice too. They call that Groundhog Day. Valentine's Day, they have the, the sexual orgies. Um, one of the key days, I won't go through them all, there's so many, but another key day is April the 30th with fertility and spring. Um, again, they have in common with the pagans with that one for Beltane. It's one of their most important calendars. They have sex with animals um, and people and then they destroy them by fire. So bonfires are a very um, important part of, of what they do. On Good Friday, 
Easter they have a black mass, Black Sabbath, to mock the death of Jesus Christ. And sometimes a man is raped and sacrificed on Good Friday. Easter Sunday um, they have a mock of the, um, really just everything that mocks Jesus really. So they have chanting, they have feasting. Um, March 24th is the Feast of the Beast where a 16 year old girl becomes the bride of Satan in a marriage ceremony. Um, on and on, you've got the autumn equinox with the dismembered hands of the corpses. You've got cannibalism in there. Uh, and really, October is where they lead right up to Halloween. There's, there's sometimes daily sacrifices. Um, Satan's birthday they call Halloween. That's the, one of their most unholy days. Now, on Halloween, the reason why they do all this is to try and open further doors to the underworld. And Satanists believe Halloween is the best time of the year to speak to demons. That interestingly enough, mediums and New Agers find Halloween the best night of the year to speak to spirits of the so-called dead. Um, Take a note uh, of that, Johnny. That's the best night uh -huh. for us to do our seance. <laughs> yeah, we've we, we had a... Uh, Sorry, but it's name Kev, the Irish fellow. God, I can Mr. Never James Swagger. Yes, Mr. James Swagger. And we we spoke about that before. It's usually about October is when the veil is at its thinnest and you can get these demons through at that specific time. Exactly. And that's why I would say that mediums, spiritualists, New Agers, uh, you know, other people, witches, truths, whatever, I believe the 31st of October is easiest for them simply because all around the world Satanists are doing the most horrific things that night, so they are introducing they're allowing the demons to come in in full force um, on that night. Not just Satanists, other occult groups, you've got the Day of the Dead in Mexico um, it's that time of year when a lot of occult things are happening therefore yes, this, the veil is thinner, um, but I wouldn't say that's a good thing, the veil being this day, This Day of the Dead, uh, Laura this was something I've only learnt about this year actually, quite naive of me, but it's November the 2nd for anyone else out there who hasn't heard of this, but yeah a Day of the Dead, what is that all about? Well, again, it's you know a lot of cultures, um have something like that or something similar and basically a lot of these cultures um, it's a lot to do with um, ancestors ancestral worship and respect for ancestors where they will try and talk to the dead as well um, but as I've said before in my experience these dead people are actually demons because when challenged in the name of Jesus Christ to show their true nature the, the, the image of the dead gran will disappear and the demon will show up um, so yeah, but it is just a time of year where there is more of that, more of that happening, definitely around the world. So it sounds but, to me, know, it sounds to me, Laura, almost like October time. We see it as Satanists down here practicing because it's the time when the veil's thinnest. Possibly we should be looking at it from the other side of the veil, and maybe this is just a harvesting or feeding time for these entities. And that's why it's so prevalent around these times. And again, these Satanists, the ones worshipping these dark ones, again, deceived. They don't even know what they're playing into. Yeah, absolutely. And because demons um, always want sacrifices of, of blood, that's one of the things they want the most. Well, they want any kind of, of sin to happen, whether it's orgies or murder or whatever, but they do want blood sacrifices. So, yeah, it's it's something that they, they, they do demand that their followers give them. And it, it's no coincidence that animal charities around the world advise people to keep their pets in through Halloween. Many animal charities even close and will not sell cats or dogs in October, um, specifically because, well, they know what happens with, with animals. So, yeah, it's... Um, it's definitely that kind of time of year. I mean, but we're living in 2015, Laura. I mean, this sounds like something from the Dark Ages, but unfortunately, this could literally be taking place on a street near you, and you would know nothing about it. In fact, it's quite likely it's taking place on a street near you, because this kind of activity is on the rise. 
Laura mentioned earlier how exorcisms are on the rise and we only have to cast our minds back to the Catholic Church and their head of exorcisms basically saying that he was going to have to recruit more exorcists because the work they've got at the moment is off the scale, Laura. Totally. Yeah, I've heard that. And, you know, it's the same for um, deliverance ministers. I know within, um, you, you know, the, the Christian churches, it's the exact same. And I get inundated myself with people. And, so, Laura, we've only got a few minutes little, left. Yeah. And there might be people listening out there just now or later on who find themselves in one of these covens. What advice could you offer them? Well, basically, I would say um, seek seek help from a from a Christian that can help get you out. Um, turn to to Jesus Christ. Ask Him into your life because the light of Jesus Christ and the love and the power of Christ is stronger than anything Satan can do. Um, so I would suggest that that definitely anyone out there who is either in a coven or who is a Satanist and you know wants out. Even in the, the elite, the Illuminati, CERN, wherever you are, um, there is no darkness that Christ cannot set you free from. He died on the cross for everyone's sin. Um, everyone's in the blood of Jesus is so powerful, it can wash you clean of any sin. So everybody can have a second chance if they ask Jesus into their life and ask them to set them free. Well, Laura, you are from now on going to be the KBS satanic correspondent. And that's not half as well, scary. No, not that. half as scary as it sounds. Oh, don't you worry. Don't you won't. Mm-hmm. Don't you worry about it. Now, before we go, and I must thank you again for a riveting hour. Where can people find your work, Laura? Yeah, well, they can find me on YouTube, Laura Maxwell, ex Spiritist. I've got my own radio show, Eternal Radio. Um, the Supernatural with Laura Maxwell tomorrow night I am interviewing an ex-Satanist so you might want to tune in for that um, and a book Dancing with the Devil by Jeff Harshbarger absolutely fantastic ladies and gentlemen that was Laura Maxwell amazing stuff Joe Joseph after the break wherever you are come on Wookiees you know it make it TFR and then you touch that dial